Welcome back. Our region's dwindling orca population is down again as the deaths of three more killer whales have been confirmed. The endangered southern resident orca population now sits at 73, and the area's top biologist fears they might not make it. King 5 environmental specialist Allison Morrow is here with an update. Hi. Hey. This is such sad news. Um, can you bring us up to date on the the most recent deaths? Right, so one death in each pod, the J-pod, K-pod, and L-pod. And so that brought us from 76 down mm -hmm. to 73. Uh, there were a couple births which have still survived, so that's a great that's celebration. Uh, one of them is a female, which is very important right now because the females are the ones that have the babies, and we've had a lot of males. Um, but it's very uh, tenuous for these whales because uh, now that we've had these three deaths, um, and even with two births, the reproductive rate at this point is so low. 70% um, of the pregnancies are ending in miscarriage, we know that. And of the ones that are born alive, uh, many of them also end up dying within wow. a couple of years. Do we know why? Well, that's the big question. And so what you hear a lot about is fish. Um, the, the research is starting to show that these whales are declining at the same time as Chinook salmon are also declining. Mm -hmm. That's their favorite food. What a lot of people don't realize about these killer whales is that they're different from other orcas who eat mammals like sea lions and seals. These only like fish and they mostly eat Chinook salmon and uh, Chinook salmon are not doing very well either so it makes sense to a lot of people that we're seeing the decline of both of these right. at the same time so a lot of the focus has been on recovering Chinook salmon stocks um, and that's a whole nother complicated issue the problem is when these whales don't have enough to eat they start metabolizing their blubber and because they come to Puget Sound a lot and unfortunately Puget Sound is a contaminated place. We have um, yeah. all kinds of uh, contaminants, toxics that run into Puget Sound, not just from um, our roadways, but also from mm -hmm. industrial waste. So they metabolize this into their blood and that makes them sick. And the big question now is, are they perhaps not eating because they feel sick? So is it this circular problem right. where there aren't enough fish, then they metabolize their blubber, then they feel sick so they don't want to eat anymore. There's also the possibility that parasites are a problem, our mm -hmm. uh, waste from our uh, wastewater systems, our sewage systems, uh, sometimes release waste that has parasites uh, uh, in them that may be making the whale sick as well. So um, you'll hear a lot of talk about fish and Chinook salmon stocks are certainly declining. It's a huge problem, but scientists are also trying to figure out what else might be making them sick. Is it right. toxics in the water? Uh, and is it perhaps parasites um, from it's sewage? It's a mystery so far, but what we know is that this tragedy is unfolding on our watch, what do uh, the top biologists say about this in terms of how big of a threat it might be to these pods just existing at all? I would say that the average biologist who has been following these whales for a significant period of time would say that if they survive, it will be somewhat miraculous. I wow. think that most of the researchers agree that we have no time. And we're probably past time to make a, a change for mm. these whales. Um, this is not a new problem. No, it's uh, been going on for a while. Decades. Is there, I mean, is it genuinely past time? We can't clean up this water? We can't do anything about this? I, I don't think so. I think at the end of the day, what you'll hear them say is, regardless, we should be doing something to clean up Puget Sound and restore fish stocks because it's just what's good for the environment anyway. Yeah. And even though it's hard to even imagine a day without the southern resident killer whales, that you're working for something greater even if they don't make it. Um, I would say that there is still a chance if you're talking, mean, I'm not a biologist, but I do interview them a lot, mm -hmm. and none of them are ready to give up hope. They all want to keep pushing forward, but they do say that they've started to they've started to become, I don't know, somewhat disenchanted, I guess, with the process because there seems to be a lot of politics, a lot of um, talking, and as Ken Balcom, who many people know, one of the biologists who's been following the Southern residents for decades, says they don't eat words, they eat fish. Right, That's exactly. what he just told me. Um, the ORCA task force has been working on this. What's happening there? Well, they have another year ahead of them, and so they're going to continue to meet. They did pass, uh, you know, well, they don't pass the regulations. They right. suggest them, and then the legislature decides 
sides. So there were some changes. Um, they made some changes with uh, boating, for instance, because noise is a problem. Um, it's hard for these whales to find the fish that they're looking for because they echolocate mm -hmm. and the boats get in the way of that. Um, so they, they made some protective mechanisms for that, push boaters a little bit further away. Um, there are some dams that are coming down. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the Snake yeah. River dams, though, and we're really not making a whole lot of headway on the Snake River dams. There's another study. Governor Inslee has budgeted some more money for that. People say uh, either if they're, they want to keep the dams, they say it's a waste of money because the state shouldn't be involved anyway. This is a federal issue. If they want to get rid of the dams, they say the state shouldn't waste the money because we already know they Yikes. should be taken down. Yeah. And that's a really contentious debate right now, too. So uh, there's little projects. And, and, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, before we went live on TV mm -hmm. about what people can do. I and think so, everybody wants to know. Absolutely. And so these kinds of of like smaller uh, community projects like rain gardens are becoming very popular and that's something that people can look into. Of course stormwater is a major problem yep. for um, fish and for these whales and so uh, that's why we should follow these regulations. Yeah, they, well, they matter. And and people right I mean this area used to be just a big forest and so our water would just get trapped in the soil and mm -hmm. soil is an amazing thing. It filters pollutants out of the water and sends it back in uh, to Puget Sound right. like almost 80% to 90% back to the way it was. But no so, more. Yeah, so if you put a forest back right on your property, something mm -hmm. that, you, that models what it used to look like here with native plants um, and shrubs so that we don't have these uh, impervious surfaces like concrete anymore, you're going to do your part to help at least trap that stormwater. And there's lots of other stuff you can do. There's there's plenty of um, resources online. But I would say that as far as like little community projects right. that are making some headway, people are at least educated on boat noise, for instance. I was out with researchers the other day and we were close to an orca. It wasn't one of the southern residents. It was a transient. But people started screaming at us, get away oh, from the whale, yeah. get away from the whale. <laughs> <laughs> and the researchers said that would never have happened five, ten years ago because people didn't realize. And Good you're starting to, to really see the public um, get involved and, and understand the main issues facing the whales. That's awesome. Allison, thank you very much. Yeah. Keep us up to date. We're just, you know, going to have to hope and pray but also act.